wild time. Are we talking about the bluefin? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, boy. California bluefin. They're freaking amazing. It, yeah, anyway, it was incredible, but I'm just talking about myself and fishing, but I had a good week. Well, I, I mean, dude, week. so when you're spearing, when you're spear fishing bluefin, you basically see a whole school coming. Yeah. So I, we, we went out and we were looking for what's called, so there's like three different types. This the bro, this is animal related, animal adjacent. The brosters will like this. When the bluefin move into California waters, they have, they exhibit a whole bunch of different behaviors. And there's, there's really four kinds of ways that you can find them mm -hmm. and hunt them or fish them. One is meter marks. So you just drive around and you look for like, well, you'll be driving and it'll say like 2000 feet deep on your sonar. And then all of a sudden you'll see a, a line at like 70 feet and you're like, holy shit, I'm over a school of tuna. Okay. Now, usually you do that by finding birds, whatever. That's later. That's like in the fall. Now, this is where I think the brothers will really like it. There's three behaviors that these bluefin exhibit in our waters that you can target them when they're not just metering, just swimming around. Because even right. that's really hard to do. There's puddling, okay. breezing, and foaming. Okay? And so... Uh, everybody wants a puddler. That's the best thing you can ever get. It's basically when they're sleeping and they sleep in a vortex. And if the ocean's uh. flat enough, while well, they're moving in this very lazy vortex, um, you can see the sort of swirl on the water surface because they're moving so much water. And, and like how deep are they when they're doing this? Right below the surface, like, okay. like five, six feet below the surface. But because, you know, it's a, you're talking about a mass of maybe 5,000, 6,000 fish in a school. Right. And, because, and, you know, they're maybe averaging 80, 100 pounds up to 250, whatever. So that many fish swimming in a vortex super slowly, um, yeah, it looks just like that. Puddling will create this weird surface pattern. And so that's what everybody dreams of finding is a puddler because when they're like that, they're kind of in a trance. And as long as you stop the boat far enough away, you can swim right up to them. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a puddler. I almost believe, think it's a myth, but I've heard a lot about it. Like just like a salty old drunks with a peg leg, just being like, "Ah, oh, came up on a puddler today." Exactly. It's that's exactly what I think. In my, in my that's hold. exactly what I think a puddler is. I think it's a <laughs> right. complete farce. But um, so that's one type, and then the type that I shot him off of is called a foamer. And Kyle, you can definitely Google this. Type in bluefin foamer. Or just go to my Instagram, actually. That's the best thing. Go to my Instagram and, and scroll scroll on the photos I just posted. And Johnny came with and grabbed his camera. He didn't dive. He just shot photos just for fun because he's already got a bunch of fish this year. And gotcha. a foamer is when the bluefin are cruising around in a pack on a school all fired up looking for bait. And when they find bait, they push it up onto the surface and just go boom, 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 boom. Uh. And they get so crazy that they're stupid in the head because they're just focused on... Uh, the bait. So Kyle, if you can right. pull up my Instagram, I, Johnny got some amazing it's, photos of the it's like trying to have a, like a serious conversation about gray aliens with Ratep when he's at the buffet at the Luxor. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? He's like, I've got crab legs and pizza right now. Yeah, Leave me alone. Shoving, yeah. Everything yeah. in his mouth. He's not thinking, but yeah, if you go over to the right, a couple more Kyle that, you know, that's a foamer right there. One more and you can actually see my fin. So that's me going on a dive about one second before I shot a fish. So I, we find the birds. That's a white turn oh, yeah. overhead. Frenzy, you see them, huh? Yeah, you see them frenzied up in this foamer like this. And then you, you stop the boat sort of ahead of the direction you hope it's moving. Swim as fast as you can. And as soon as you're relatively close, you dive because you, you don't have time to swim into it or they they just push through you. Right. And so this was 10 seconds before I shot my fish, which, Kyle, if you go all the way to the left, you can see the fish I got. And um, uh, so that was rad. And I got like a nice 100-pounder out of that Damn. pool. Yeah, That's no, that was awesome. And then the third type are the breezers, and they're probably the hardest to get on, but breezers are like a pack of fish that are pre-foamer. So they're just cruising around on the surface looking for bait, and you see some incredible stuff. You can see their sides where they're shining because they're kind of rolling back and forth, and it reflects off the sun. Mm -hmm. Or you just see like all the wind pattern on the surface is going this way, and then all of a sudden there's this weird group of pattern going this way, and you're like, what's that? And that pattern is, again, them pushing water because they're just below the surface, breezing. And when you find breezers, you can oftentimes get in front of that if they're, like, going in one direction. Right. Yeah, get like that. Those are, those Dude, are you have to have a right very there. fucking fast boat to get, yes. a, to get ahead of them. Yes, you do. Um, and the boat we went on was crazy. But, yeah, so sometimes, yeah, that was a great photo, the first one you had there, Kyle. Yeah, and that's them pushing water as breezers. But, yeah, you see that pattern. Click that, Kyle. 
um, you see that pattern, you're like, oh shit, freezers. And you go and get in front of it and hop in and try and have one pass by you. So, so basically you would just kind of ch- chill near the surface with your, with your mosque and snorkel in the water <laughs> and just wait for one to cruise by you at 43 miles an hour and just blast basically, it. Basically. And then, yeah, That's and gotta then be it's a, a real shot. rodeo. It's tough and they're flying and you're using these big guns and they don't come super close, but you know, it's like every now and then with bluefin, with tuna fishing in particular, it's like the stars all have to align, and they did on Tuesday. So I was, I was yeah. fired up. I was super stoked to get a fish, and yeah, had a good few days. Dude, good that's few days. that's pretty that's pretty nice. I, I think it. We may have talked about this. God, we've done so many of these, but I know, it's you know, because I, I years ago when I was working with the Sea Shepherds, we did a documentary about um, them cutting open uh, bluefin nets. Uh, uh-huh. off the coast of Libya. Uh-huh. And I, I believe, you know, my understand. So after I did that, maybe I was just listening to Paul Watson talk too much. And I don't know if it's true, but he made it feel like bluefin were, were seriously not uh, a sustain. Like they were in big, big trouble. Uh, it just depends. The East coast bluefin definitely are um, the West coast bluefin. There's, there's two different species. The West coast bluefin or the bluefin in the Eastern Pacific have been removed from the endangered species list about five years ago and okay. put on the near threatened list. So their numbers are bouncing back substantially. And so, you know, I, I would never go out and intentionally hunt an endangered species. I don't agree with that. Uh, right. Um, once they were, once I looked at the science, once I looked at the Eastern Pacific stocks and I saw that they were moved to vulnerable or near threatened, whichever status it is, I was like, this is great. These fish, the management is working. They're bouncing back. Their populations are stronger year after year. I'd like to go take a tuna. And right. so I've done that two year, three years in a row. And each year I've done one tuna, which feeds me for a full year. And I'm, I'm very selective and that's it. You know, like I won't go take a bunch. Um, I think that it's great. I think that what's going on is fantastic, that the management has made a big difference. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that was crazy. So Kyle, pull up that, that photo I just sent in the chat. Um, so when they did this bluefin thing, God, 2011, that was so long ago. Jesus Christ. Uh, they, there was the civil war. So right that, that top image there, Kyle, that was, they went and cut, they put divers in and went and cut those two nets open that each wow. had a school in them. Wow. Um, and the underwater footage of that was crazy. I'm sure. Um, got them in a lot of trouble, but there was basically, there was a <laughs> civil war there was a, a war going on in Libya. And so there's fucking, you know, military planes flying overhead. And this, I guess there's this time of year where they, lots of different schools kind of meet up in, I think this is, is in the Mediterranean. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. They funnel them into the med. Yeah. yeah. And so because of the war that was going on in Libya, there was no, um, no one was enforcing the, the limits. Yeah. So it was just, people were taking, you know, you're allowed to take however many 50 or a hundred in the nets. And they were, you know, people were taking thousands. Sure. So that's sure. why they were there. You know, well, and those Atlantic open. bluefin too, they really are in jeopardy. And one of the reasons is uh, w- their migration route is right through the Mediterranean. And Kyle, I, I think a lot of people don't realize this. Can you just pull up mouth of the Mediterranean real quick? Um, as a, as like just an image or a map, Google map, it's a tiny little area, the Mediterranean, the entrance into the Mediterranean. Mm. And so if your route as a fish is going in and out of the Mediterranean Sea and it's 12 or 14 or 20, I don't even know, miles that there's this choke point, you can take every single fish out of there. It's very simple. You just put net next to net next to net and zero bluefin make it in or out. And that's like what they were doing in Sardinia and in Italy and a few other places. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at the mouth of the Mediterranean Sea over there. I mean, it's just like holy shit. Yeah, it's tiny. It's tiny. It's the Horn of Africa there. It's very, very easy to choke point these fish. And off the boot of Italy over there near to Sardinia, they do the same thing as the as the bluefin go up there. So it's like it's very easy to wipe out the, the Atlantic bluefin population. And right. that's part of the problem. The other thing, too, about this, and, and this is where I differ from a lot of sort of naturalists. If you want to go out and get your bluefin and do what I did and work your ass off and go dive and go 15 miles offshore and chase them around. I got lucky I got them in a day and right. take your bluefin. I encourage it, by the way. Not necessarily an endangered species, not Atlantic bluefin. I encourage that. If you go back to that Paul Watson 
shot that we saw there where they're corralling the entire school to go into your fucking cans or whatever. Yeah. Obviously I don't encourage that. You know, I think sustainable harvest of your own protein is a very good thing when you're doing it at the, I agree. Commercial fishing's fucked. So, you know, it's like they're, it's like apples and oranges over here. They're not the same things that are, are being compared and they get treated with these blankets. Oh, you shouldn't fish bluefin. Well, you should, you should do it sustainably and ethically and morally, and you should do it, you know, one fish for a year is great, especially if the population is healthy. You absolutely 0% chance should should have, you should not have a commercial fishery for a fish like that, period. Right. So it's like, you right, know, right, right. and uh, like nobody's going to enforce that, but that's just my my Yeah, dude, that. when you see those nets, the underwater shots of the nets with the, the whole school circling and it's just more fish than you can count, and there's two of them right next to each other, it is... I, I, you know, I eat meat. I, I don't generally freak out about stuff like this, but it was, yeah. it's alarming to see an entire school of four or 500 fish or however many just trapped in this net. It's brutal. It Wild times. So if you want more behind the scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing, come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.